Hello everyone, you are welcome to solve this nice math problem which is 8 to the power of x plus 64 to the power of x divided by 16 to the power of x plus 32 to the power of x this is equal to 3 over 2. So what is the value of x given that x is not equal to 0? So let's provide a solution from here. We can express 8 to the power of x, this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3 then raised to the power of x, then plus 64 to the power of x, which you can express as 4 to the power of 3, then this to the power of x, divided by, now 16 to the power of x, we can express this as 4, which is 2 to the power of 2, multiplying by 4 raised to the power of x, then plus that 2 to the power of x, which you can express as, this is the same thing as 2, multiplying by 4 squared, which is 16, then raised to the power of x. Now, the next step is that 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x, as well as 4 to the power of 3 to the power of x, this is in the form of a to the power of n, which we can raise to the power of m, which we can express as a to the power of m, raised to the power of n. And 2 squared, multiplying by 4 to the power of x, as well as 2 times 4 to the power of 2 to the power of x. This is in the form of a, multiplying by b, raised to the power of n, and this can be expressed as a to the power of n, multiplying by b to the power of n. Now let's apply these two properties here, so that now in the numerator we have 2 to the power of x, raised to the power of 3, plus 4, to the power of x raised to the power of 3 divided by now here we have 2 to the power of now we'll have here 2 to the power of x then raised to the power of 2 multiplying by 4 to the power of x then plus here we'll have 2 to the power of x multiplying by now here we'll have 4 to the power of x raised to the power of 2. Now, the next step is that we have 2 to the power of x here and 4 to the power of x. So we can let 2 to the power of x be equal to a and we can let 4 to the power of x be equal to b. Substituting this, then we have in the numerator, we have a to the power of 3 plus b to the power of 3, then divided by, we have that here, a squared, multiplying by b, then plus, here we'll have a, multiplying by b to the power of 2, this is equal to 3 over 2. Now, Remember, this is always equal to 3 over 2. Now, a to the power of 3 plus b to the power of 3, this is the sum of two cubes that we can express as a plus b. Then here we have a squared minus ab, then plus b squared, divided by... Now, we have that here. A, B is common, we can factor out A, B, so that into the parentheses we have A plus B. This is equal to 3 over 2. Now, the next step is that A plus B is common here, so we can, we can simplify this. And then we have in the numerator A squared minus A, B, then plus B squared divided by a b this is equal to 3 over 2 now the next step here is to cross multiply so that we have 2 multiplying by a squared minus a b plus b squared this is equal to 3 multiplying by a b so let's open the parentheses here this is 2 a squared minus 2 a b then plus 2b squared. So this is equal to 3ab. 
The next step is to take 3AB on the, on the left hand side so that we have 2A squared minus 2AB then plus 2B squared subtract 3AB this is equal to 0. So now we have 2A squared minus minus 2AB minus 3AB this is minus 5AB then plus 2 b squared this is equal to, to 0. Now the next step from here let's divide everything here by b squared by b squared and also here by b squared. So let's simplify b squared and b squared. Here we have b and b here so here we remain with 1b but now here we have 2a squared over b squared then subtract 5 over b then plus 2 this is equal to, to 0. Now we have that a squared over b squared we can express this as 2 multiplying by a over b raised to the power of 2 minus here we have 5 this is the same thing as 5 we have a here, this is the same thing as 5a over b, then plus 2, this is equal to, to 0. So you can see we have a, b here, and a, b here. So we can let a over b be equal to m. So substituting m, this means we have 2m squared minus 5m then plus 2 this is equal to, to 0. Now we can solve we can solve this this quadratic equation by factorization here. So this means we have 2m squared subtract the product here. The product here is 2 times 2 which is 4 and the sum is minus 5. So this implies that we can get two factors so that when you sum these two factors you're supposed to get minus 5 and if you multiply these two factors definitely we have a value of 4. So this is minus 4 and minus 1. So here we have minus 4m minus m plus 2. This is equal to, to 0. So we have two parts here. For the first part here 2m is common so we can factor out 2m so that we have here this is m minus 2 then subtract m plus 2 this is the second part here 1 is common so we factor out 1 then we have m minus 2 this is equal to 0 so m minus 2 is common here so we can factor m minus 2 and then we have 2m minus 1. This is equal to, to 0. So we have two parts here. The first part is m minus 2. This is equal to 0. And then we have 2m subtract 1. This is equal to, to 0. And this implies from the first part here. m1 is equal to 2. While here we have 2m is equal to 1. We divide both signs by 2 and this implies that we have the second value of m that is m2 equal to a half. Now we have that m1 is equal to 2, m2 is a half. Now if you recall, if you recall, we are saying that let m be equal to a over b. Substituting a over b starting with m1, we have a over b. This is equal to 2. Again, if you recall, we are saying that a is equal to 2 to the power of x. And we said b is equal to 4 to the power of x. Okay? So let's substitute this. So a is 2 to the power of x divided by b, which is 4 to the power of x. This is equal to 2. So now, so for x here, 2 to the power of x over 4 to the power of x, 
this can be expressed as 2 over 4 raised to the power of x. This is equal to 2. So we can simplify here. We can simplify here by 2, 1, 4 divided by 2. This is 2. So we have a half raised to the power of x. This is equal to 2. Now, a half here raised to the power of x. This is in the form of 1 over a raised to the power of n. This can be expressed as a to the power of minus n. So applying this property, then we have 2 to the power of minus x. This is equal to 2. So clearly, we can see that the bases are common here. 2 is raised to the power of 1. So the bases are common here. So this means that a to the power of m, this is equal to a to the power of n. So exponent m is equal to n. So we have that minus x is equal to 1. So let's divide by minus, and this means that x1 is equal to minus 1. So this is the value of the first value of x. Now, given that m2 is equal to a half, we can solve the corresponding value of x. So again here, we have a over b. This is equal to a half. So this means that here we have 2 to the power of x divided by 4 to the power of x. This is equal to half. So this implies that we have here 2 over 4 raised to the power of x. This is equal to half. So we can simplify again here so that we have a half to the power of x. This is equal to a half. Now, applying this property, then this implies that you can express this as 2 to the power of minus x. This is equal to 2 to the power of minus 1. And again, since the bases are common here, then minus x is equal to minus 1. So we have minus x is equal to minus 1. So let's divide by minus. So that here we have the value of x2 equal to 1. So we have two values of x here. We have two values of x. We have that x1 is equal to minus 1. x2 is equal to 1. So the next step is to verify that these two values of x satisfies the equation as follows. Now let's verify that the value of x1, which is minus 1, and x2, which is positive 1, satisfies the equation. Now, now if you recall here, we had that 8 to the power of x plus 64 to the power of x divided by 16 to the power of x plus 32 to the power of x. This is supposed to give us a value of 3 over 2. Let's start with x1, which is minus one. Let's substitute minus one. So we have eight to the power of minus one plus sixty-four to the power of minus one divided by sixteen to the power of minus one, then plus that two to the power of minus one. This is supposed to give us a value of three over two. Now, given that a to the power of minus minus 1. This is the same thing as 1 over a. Now, having this in mind, then we have 1 over 8 plus 1 over 64 divided by 1 over 16 plus 1 over that 2. This should give us a value of 3 over 2. So now, in the numerator here, we have that the LCM is equal to 64, so that 64 divided by 8 is 8 times 1, which is 8, then plus 64 divided by 64, this is 1 times 1, which is 1, then divided by, in the denominator, the LCM is actually equal to that 2. So if you say 
32 divided by 16, this is 2 times 1, which are, we have 2. Then 32 divided by that 2 is 1 times 1, this is 1. Then this is supposed to give us a value of 3 over 2. So, in the numerator here, we have 9 over 64. Now, multiplying by, this is 32 over 2 plus 1, which is 3. This should give us a value of 3 over 2. So let's simplify here. 9, 3, 9 divided by 3, this is 3. Then we divide 64 by that 2, by that 2, 1. 64 divided by that 2, this is 2. So it's clear that 3 over 2 on the left-hand side is equal to 3 over 2 on the right-hand side. And this proves that, this proves that x1, which is minus 1, satisfies the equation. So let's take x2, which is 1. So we have, we have 8 raised to the power of x. We have 8 raised to the power of x plus 64 to the power of x over 16 to the power of x plus that 2 to the power of x. This is should give us a value of 3 over 2. So substituting 1, then we have 8 to the power of 1 plus 64 to the power of 1 divided by 16 to the power of 1 plus that 2 to the power of 1. This is supposed to give us a value of 3 over 2. So this is 64 plus 8. This is equal to 72 divided by 16 plus that 2, which is 48. This is supposed to give us a value of 3 over 2. So 72 divided by 8, this is 9. 48 divided by 8, this is equal to 6. So we have 9 over 6. This is supposed to be equal to 3 over 2. So let's simplify again here. Now, 9 divided by 3, this is 3. 6 divided by 3, this is 2. So we have 3 over 2 on the left-hand side is equal to 3 over 2 on the right-hand side. And this query shows that x1 and x2 satisfies the equation. So kindly follow the steps, like this video, and kindly subscribe. Please like this video and subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye bye for now.